Hey guys, welcome back to the Wall Street Bull. Anthony here. I hope you're all doing well and staying positive out there, guys. It is video number two for today. Uh, I put one up earlier today uh, just to give some examples of how you can actually make money in crypto. So go watch that. It's very interesting. Uh, now today we have some updates in relation to Ripple and XRP. Very, very bullish. Of course, that is a given on my channel, guys. I mean, there could be some shady things going on behind the scenes with the SEC. Very interesting stuff. And uh, also, we've got the head of the BIS, the Bank of International Settlements, coming out saying that the battle has been lost with crypto uh, replacing fiat currencies. Anyway, there's a video on him going around. Uh, David Schwartz from Ripple as well has put up a very cryptic video. Uh, banner on his Twitter page, which is interesting. I'm going to have a read of that as well. Uh, some pretty crazy Bitcoin price predictions. We could be seeing it move up very, very soon. Uh, and Ethereum as well. And of course, our favorite Gary Gensler talking about staking in the United States. Uh, we're going to go through all of that. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video, guys. Let's get straight into it. Massive shout out and thank you to every single one of you. 53.8 thousand people, guys, that have followed my channel. I really appreciate it. Thank Thank you very much now if you are new to the channel make sure you smash the subscribe button down there and turn on that little bell notification as well because as you can see right here i love documenting my journey with investing with cryptos dividend stocks growth stocks talking about passive income building financial freedom and of course my goal at the end of the day is to build generational wealth so come along with this incredible journey things are just getting crazy in this space also if you can give this video a thumbs up watch it straight through it would really help me push this channel out to a lot more people People. Well, because uh, the YouTube algorithm absolutely loves when you incredible ladies and gentlemen do that. So make sure you give it a good old thumbs up. Also, a little disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor. Please do your own research and due diligence with this stuff. I do not want to see anyone get financially hurt. That is why my number one golden rule is I only invest what I can afford to lose. And yes, we don't like to lose. You can lose money like that in the blink of an eye in crypto. So please be careful out there. Do your own research and due diligence. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the formalities are out of the way. There is so much happening in the world including like UFOs and spheres now like landing on a Japanese and a beach, sorry, in Japan. People have no idea what the hell it is. Anyway, are we under attack by aliens? I don't know, man. There's a lot of flying objects going around now. Strange things are happening. Anyway, formalities are out of the way. Let's go to the community tab now. Reason why I am so bullish on XRP and Ripple in general. Okay, I'm in the property business. I, I deal a lot with financiers all the time, banks, institutions, whatever it may be. And basically, the money business is a crazy business. No doubt about it. There's millions and millions and trillions of dollars around the world that moves every single day. Okay, look at this list that I obviously, and this is no BS right here, and I just put this up probably 40 minutes ago, but name another crypto project that has as many partners with institutional banks as Ripple. Look at them. Look at them, 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 look at them all, look at them all. Just, it's incredible. It just blows my mind that they are partnered with so many banks around the world, 55 countries. All right, and I know you guys are looking at this list right now. DBS Group, massive, Royal Bank of Canada. I own shares in that company. UBS, incredibly large. It's one of, it is the biggest Swiss bank ever. Uh, UBS right here. We've got National Australia Bank, you know, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, uh, what else we got here, guys? Uh, moving down, let's see some other big ones right here if we can spot them. There's heaps, heaps. I'm talking only about the other. I mean, SBI Remit, Japan. You know, you've got stuff Macquarie Group as well, Westpac, ANZ, big four banks here in Australia. Uh, what else we got here? Western Union, UAE Exchange, Zip Remit. You know, Banco Santander. I do own shares in that. It is enormous. Bank of Thailand, Bank of Indonesia. This is what I'm talking about right here. So again, is something shady going on with Gary Gensler trying to give his, uh, you know, his mates on Wall Street the upper hand in, uh, in cross-border payments? I don't know, but it's it just seems all too, you know, coincidental that this case is basically coming to an end in March. ISO 222 is going live. We know for a fact that Ripple is going to be using XRP through R3 quarter, which is working with Swift as well. 
Anyway, and this case is due to end probably the end of March. I don't know, maybe and then we'll, uh, the final resolution will probably be before June anyway. But not that that matters because I'm, I'm very patient and optimistic about it. But anyway, guys, it's incredibly bullish. All right, so many partners. And yes, two videos today. And here is the whole thing with R3 quarter right here. You can see down the bottom, it's a little bit hard. It's a bit blurry. But uh, cryptocurrency XRP, R3 quarter, live ecosystem with a need for settlement in fiat currencies right here. And SWIFT GPI expansion. This is what I'm talking about right here. It is all to do with on-demand liquidity, instant transactions for around the world. Very, very bullish. Now, this is a, a an interesting tweet from David Schwartz. Okay. I don't know, man. Like, I'm, I'm a fan of his. I'm a massive fan of what he's done for Ripple, of course. But uh, he put this tweet up. So it basically says, when, when a scrappy financial startups, sorry, takes on a web of corruption, truth, uh, and betrayal to bring instant payments to the masses, they learn that the cost of disrupting the status quo is higher than they could ever have imagined, which is interesting, but forcing them to decide between their vision and their survival. Ripple. Interesting. Is that a cryptic tweet? Let me know in the comments below. In actual fact, I'm going to have a look at some comments right here. Don't know if this is positive or negative. I don't know either, to be quite honest right here. Hold on tight. The corrupt SEC clock is ticking. Exactly. My thoughts on this. Well, <laughs> you know, in all honesty, guys, I really believe that the SEC didn't believe that Ripple would have fought so hard in this lawsuit against a government regulator. All right. So you can see the res what happened with library. I mean... What I'm saying is going back to the whole partnership with banks, all these banks, they're not playing with a small, you know, crypto project here. You're talking about a project that is partnered with banks all around the world, right? Moving trillions of dollars cross-border instantaneously. Bang, money in your bank account. Let that one sink in for a moment. And going back to this whole point here, my thoughts on this is that, again... I believe that the SEC didn't realize how how much Ripple was going to fight this because of you know regulatory clarity, and uh, anyway, so survival of the fittest right here is my my opinion on this, guys. And I think Ripple's definitely a survivor and will have a big win as well. Old coins up in the portfolio, there weren't much to be quite honest, and it was a bit grey this morning. Uh, Amp, Alliance Block, and Gas. Now Alliance Block, they are doing an airdrop. I don't know when that's happening. I'll have to look into that. But again, that has still been suspended on CoinSpot as well. Anyway, let's go to CoinSpot. Now, there is a link below to this. Uh, this is where I personally buy my cryptos in Australia. Again, check it out if you wish. If you are new to this, you will get $10 in Bitcoin. And with any of this stuff, please be careful, of course, and do your own research and never invest more than what you can afford to lose. And all the prices you see here are in Australian dollars and everything else is set to US dollars because I'm catering for everybody around the world. And also, I just want to point out that I'm not storing anything other than what I'm staking on CoinSpot. And the only reason why I'm staking on CoinSpot is because they do not they do not make you lock up your tokens for a certain amount of time like Binance does. I can have access to those staking rewards instantly. That's why I love it. All right, Binance, you need to lock it up there for 180 to 90 to 180 days plus, like even a year even. And uh, and again, Trust Wallet does the same thing because it's pretty much owned by Binance as well. So, and check your crypto wallets if you can stake. Now, Bitcoin's sitting at $36,000 Australian, okay? Up 1.49%. Yesterday, these were all in the red. Now, again, I said yesterday, if you wanted to trade as a, as a way of trading, and I should have mentioned this in my video, when you see the prices down, like, you know, coming towards a weekend or a Thursday, the prices usually come back up 8 or 9%. And, uh, it, you know, you could make 8 or 9% just by buying when it's down and selling when it's up, if you wish, not financial advice. But anyway, 36K, Ethereum's at 2,500. Some really, uh, pretty bullish stuff coming out about Ethereum as well. My uh, trading bot in the Patreon is doing extremely well. Basically buying when it's high, or sorry, buying low, selling high, buying low, selling high, etc., etc. It's incredible, guys. The link is below for the Patreon. Feel free to check that out. Very, very bullish. Uh, ADA's at 58 cents. You've got XRP 59 cents. Still incredibly cheap. I will say that. And again, I, I, as I keep mentioning, I looked up the history of Ethereum basically at 90 cents six years ago. So again, I think that's going to be in the same realm, definitely. And again, it is still in the top cryptos, even though there's a lawsuit going on with the SEC and it has survived three bear markets. Anyway, 
Maticus, uh, $2.10. Doge, $0.12. Solana's at $36. Moving down some favorites. Link, $11 today, which is nice. Aptos, the bot that I've got, is running, doing very nice in the Patreon. $20. VeChain is at $0.04. Hedera's at $0.12 as well. ICP down 2.74% to $10. I'm looking to acquire more ICP. Algo's at $0.41. Cents. Quant, $205. Pain in the ass. It will not go down. Sorry about the language. Uh, Phantom is at $0.77. Cents. Axie's at $16, which is nice. Neo's at $20. Uh, scrolling down some other favorites, of course. IOTA's at $0.38. Cents. Now, CFX. My bot is going parabolic on this one. I wish I had to put more capital in that. As uh, everyone knows, uh, finding a lot of capital is quite difficult. Seriously, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, mental returns. Just ridiculous. Anyway... Patreon, link below. Now, moving on some father favorites right here. Casper at six cents as well. DYDX is what I'm looking at, $4. And of course, XDC, very undervalued at four cents as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I haven't checked Reef in a while, but this is another favorite of mine. Still under a cent. Very, very undervalued. XYO doing quite nicely, up 2% today as well. And of course, ALBT, which again, not trading, zero, which is annoying. Anyway, let's go to Crypto Bubbles. And yes, Wall Street Bill University. Go check it out, guys. It's incredible. I love putting up all the news before I put it up on the videos and all my trading bots, crypto buys and sells, my dividend investing, very bullish community. And I love talking with everyone there in the uh, group there directly, which is nice as well. It makes things a lot easier. And uh, moving on to crypto bubbles, we've got stacks uh, up 29% today, 140 on the week and 191% on the month, which is just mind blowing. Floki's up 33% as well, still up 17% on the week and 345% on the month, which is crazy. I'd be very careful with this one, guys. Again, I'm not investing in any more meme tokens. I'm done with that. Uh, I had my fun with it. I made money on Dogecoin. I've made money on Shiba Inu. I'm still holding a large position in both of those. So we'll see where that one goes. Sorry, guys, just had a coffee. Uh, we've got here, guys, Optimism, 15% on the day. Still up 30% on the month, which is really nice as well. Lido Dow, okay, I had a bot with this one and it ended up getting liquidated, which is annoying, but nevertheless, you just keep moving on with this stuff. But 13% uh, on the day, nine on the week, 23% on the month, very, very nice. Still incredible buying opportunities. And of course, we've got XRP up slightly today, 1.8%. Just imagine when this thing goes absolutely parabolic, what's going to happen. It's probably the most talked about crypto out there at the moment, other than the stuff that Elon Musk puts out, puts out to be quite honest. Now, moving on, guys, we've got, again, some interesting news articles coming out. Now, I saw this on Twitter, but uh, is the SEC driving a secret agenda to help BlackRock and other industry giants enter the industry? Makes you question what Gary Kensler's motives are, really. And uh, in what appears to be a response calls from the industry, veterans a clear rule. The United States SEC seems to be he uh, basically heeding the calls to the newly unveiled rule to change the asset custody. Earlier this month, the regulator under the leadership, Gary Gensler, lizard man, basically published a 434-page rule change uh, that will force custody providers to provide evidence that the customer's funds are adequately segregated and thus protected from insolvency. To, to an extent, I don't have anything against that. I mean, I really don't. So they, they should keep clients' funds separate. In Obviously, this is coming out of the wake of FTX, right? But while the rule change is designed for the entirety of the financial ecosystem, it is also uniquely situa uh, suited for the crypto ecosystem, according to Bloomberg. This rule change will benefit mainstream companies with the vested interest in a nascent crypto ecosystem. Much more, the positioning was also backed by prominent Ripple advocate and crypto attorney Johnny Deaton. True. And although the proposed rule change is subject to changes following a short period of consultation from the public, many are already posing it that the regulator may have an agenda to support top financial services firms already making a dive in the crypto ecosystem. At the moment, firms like Fidelity Investments, BlackRock, Goldman Sachs, and Citigroup are amongst others already exploring new avenues to offer custody services. I would not give my crypto to institutions. That's first and foremost. There are a number of traditional industry players, offshoots that offer similar services. According to the experts, these are a better position and benefit from rule change. This is because that they already are favorable structure that can adhere to new rules without so much hassle. Interesting. And the bigger banks are logical participants who would potentially benefit from rule changes in that they are now have a roadmap to what they need to do to support institutions who want to invest in crypto. Could he be doing this? I don't know. No one would know. And again, the list right here, guys, are basically of all the partners with Ripple and XRP. It's incredibly bullish. And again, settlements 
in seconds, not days. Expand your reach and to accelerate your payments. Deliver real-time global payments without trying to uh, tying up capital in des uh, destination markets. Our proven technology and global network enable remittances, SME payments, distributions for treasury flows that are faster, more reliable, and more affordable for organizations and their customers. Absolutely true. Now, SEC has to clarify what's permissible for staking, former CFTC chair says. They should be the ones regulating crypto, I'm just saying. But it remains unclear whether the SEC enforcement action against crypto exchange Kraken represents a broader crackdown on staking, according to Timothy Massad, former Commodities Futures Trading Commission, CFTC chairman right here. The Kraken case, gives it, giving in its terms, was very much clearly solicitation of investments and fail, falls within the de, sorry falls within the definition of an investment contract. So the facts make it clear why the SEC took its action, Massad said during an interview right here. But Kraken staking plat programs, however, are rather different from those offered from by other platforms, and we don't know at this time whether it was just those features that caused the SEC to bring action or whether this does represent a broader attack on staking, Massad said. We'll have to wait and see whether the SEC sheds more light on what type of staking is permissible and what's not. And uh, I don't know, man, what Gary Gensler is going to do. He's gone on a rampage, but he's continuing here. Gary Gensler is playing a game, but no one, but not the one you think. And again, I think he is playing some games here, but Gensler has made a show of cracking down on crypto companies that haven't engaged in actual misconduct. When the real fraud is taking place, he's nowhere to be seen. On Feb 13th, right here, the federal judge put the SEC commission and, and CFTC cases against the former FTX CEO, Sam McMahon fried on hold. You'll be forgiven if you miss this story. Headlines on social media were dominated by the breaking news the SEC was suing crypto firm Paxos for minting BUSD as well, Binance Coin. We are not here to debate whether stable coins are securities. The Howie test has been discussed to death. And while it's true, the few people expect the profit from the token peg to a fiat currency, true. The issue is more nuanced, uh, basically, than the debate typically suggests, which is interesting, a delay tactic which is interesting, but Judge Castell granted Justice Department motion to stay the FTX law lawsuits filed by the SEC and the CFTC. Unsurprisingly, Bankman Freed consented to putting a civil case on hold. Since pleading not guilty, defrauding billions of dollars right here uh, from his firm collapse in exchange, paying $250 million bond, Bankman Freed has living at his parents' house in mansion in California right now, and he's free to soak up the sun by the pool and play a League of Legends. He wants, uh, while millions of FTX customers who lost billions of dollars are left waiting for justice. And again, delay tactics are nothing new in court cases right here. Putting time and distance between the defendant and the crime itself is a well-established strategy. And let's not forget, it took two months for the bankman free to be extradited from the Bahamas and formally charged on US soil. Anyway, delay tactics right here. Mike Novogratz, uh, basically on why Bitcoin could hit 30k before the end of March, amid rising FOMO, fear of missing out. I agree. I think it'll go well before that. U.S. Congressman right here introduces bill to block CBDC rollout. This is good. I don't like CBDCs. Sorry, guys. Uh, again, I believe that they are just a way for governments to control people. And again, it's nice to see some people in Congress in the United States, and I'm sure it's going to happen around the world, uh, people standing up against it. And obviously, Deutsche Bank completes trial of tokenized investment platform. Project DAMA is a novel digital asset management access system for transaction transacting sorry, tokenized securities. Interesting. So that is also happening as well. Keep an eye on this space. Net positive flow where the money has been going. We have, ladies and gentlemen, move this down because this thing always plays up, guys. I'm sorry about this. Wait for it to load. There we go. Okay, Ethereum, Bitcoin. Uh, we've got uh, Stacks right here. Anchor Protocol. I think that ha uh, that hype's dulled down a bit. Solana and Amp. Very bullish on these projects, of course. Moving on to crypto Twitter, guys. And yes, I just sent a reply there, but let's move on. I'm at the Wall Street Bull. I'll just go follow me on Twitter, guys. It's very bullish. I will be giving this bull ring away when I hit 100,000 subs on YouTube. And Amali, thank you for this, but SEC has lost four out of five cases in Supreme Court. They will lose against Ripple, in my opinion. Now, this has come around. I've been seeing this on Twitter all day today, but the Bank of International Settlements right here, uh, according to Augustine Carstens right here, have a listen to this in relation to crypto, guys. Uh, the, a few years ago, uh, crypto assets and cryptocurrencies were were in a way put as an alternative to 
to, to fiat money. I think that battle has been won. Uh, technology doesn't make for trusted money. Uh, only the, the, infra, the, the legal historical infrastructure behind central banks give cre cre credibility. So it has now become an alternative uh, uh, or an activity, a financial activity that could exist under certain, under certain conditions. He's not saying that it can't exist, but it needs to be, exist under certain conditions. I don't know. But anyway, don't hate on him, by the way. That's just mean. All right? I'm not a bully like that. Be kind. Be kind to everybody, straight up. And moving on, guys, you've got the exponential adoption curve of Bitcoin explained in one simple chart. People effing around and people finding out right here, this is basically what's occurred literally since I first bought Bitcoin in 2016. And yes, this is San Pellegrino Mineral Water, the water of the gods. It is incredible. Love it. And crypto has a real world utility for initiatives related to social impact and to sustainability. Here's why Ripple's VP impact on Ken Weber predicts NGOs will be the beginning to integrate crypto into the programming and better serve financially vulnerable right here. So focus on real world utility. Now, I don't know, guys, what the hell this is, but uh, this has been making the news in Australia. What do you think it is? I don't know. Is it an alien? Is it a Dragon Ball Z? Is it a Pokemon thing? Or I don't know. Like, it's just full on. We've been seeing too much of this stuff going on at the moment. Uh, one of those, uh, a sea, uh, something for the sea, I don't know, to mount it, whatever, a buoy, whatever you want to call it. It was a mine, apparently. They tested it. It's not a mine. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> Uh, now moving on guys, you've got the fear and greed index sitting at 59. The moon, Carl, big fan of your channel, mate. The yearly candles indicates a three year bull market. That is going to be freaking wild. Uh, Switzerland mayor of Lugano, Switzerland says in March, they will unveil a spring school program for Bitcoin education. I uh, would love to send my daughter to that. They'd be incredible. Shiba Inu payments expand to retail stores in France via partnership Shib. So you can use your Shib to buy coffee in France. Very, very nice. And from November through to January, Ripple formally announced several new corporate payment partners and on-demand liquidity users, in addition to the AI and NFT initiatives. MFFs Africa, FOMO Pay, TravelX, understandably uh, get the views, but pay attention to the holiday announcements too, guys. That's incredible. And Tom Emmer as well, another congressman. I, I introduced the bill here for the Anti-Surveillance uh, State Act to halt efforts on unselected bureaucrats in Washington from stripping Americans to their right of financial privacy. Truth. Uh, moving on, guys. Again, uh, yeah, there's bushfires here in Australia. It's in Melbourne at the moment. It's pretty full on. It absolutely reeked this morning when I was going for my morning stroll. Uh, global payments giant into... I can't even see that, guys. Ingentco right here uh, now accepts Bitcoin and crypto payments in France. Very nice. And private Bitcoin wallets will not be banned by the EU's new anti-money laundering bill, which is incredible as well. And we have some interesting stuff from Rosie Rios. I'm just going to have a quick play of this and then we'll end up on the video. Have a listen to Rosie Rios. U.S. currency, almost $1.8 trillion with my name on it and currency circulation. So no one has made more money than I have. But if I were following the money, where is it going? It's going to the metaverse. It's going to blockchain. It's going to artificial intelligence. Technology and innovation will be the key. And here's what's important to remember. In 2002 in 2008, we saw a huge growth of investment in technology and innovation. This was during the, town, the downturn. What was invented in 2007 that has turned our world upside down today? Anyone? The iPhone. Very good. The iPhone was invented in 2007. There is no doubt, and then obviously subsequent to that, you saw Facebook, you saw Google, you saw Airbnb, you saw Uber, in one of our biggest downturns innovation still mattered and that's going to still be the case this is a very resilient global economy and a lot of that innovation is happening here absolutely it's happening here but when i think about the pillars of capital financial capital physical capital intellectual capital it is human capital that still remains the best investment to make and i know that's happening here in this country i know it's happening in the u.s and I want people to remember that this relationship that the U.S. has with India is so important. Anyway, moving on from that, she did say blockchain and she is partnered with Ripple. She's on their board, which is incredible as well. 
Anyway, guys, some pretty crazy stuff from Elon Musk and Coinbase on the 23rd of the 2nd, which is today, probably tomorrow in the United States. Yes, it is now the same time in the United States, the same date, but Coinbase is doing something. So who knows what that's going to be. This video will be up before then, so we'll see what happens, what Coinbase is doing. Anyway, guys, let's go to CoinMarketCap. This video is a little bit long today. Uh, we've got 1.1 trillion US dollars, 61 billion in volume, which is nice. 42% BTC, 18% Ethereum. Where my main focus is, guys, is yes, my watch list right here, the banking coins. I keep saying it every day, but honestly, you know, when you do so much research and reading into stuff like this, this is where the money's flowing right here. And of course, my one that I'm very bullish on is XRP, of course, because again, the institutions, just as plain and simple as that. Very, very simple. Anyway, that is it for today's video, guys. Thank you very much for sticking around. I will speak to everyone tomorrow in the community tab. Join the Patreon because the bots are doing incredibly, uh, incredibly well. So I'll speak to everyone in there as well. Peace out. Have a good night. Bye.